everybody, welcome back to the Retro Ghetto and today we're going to be ranking the Silver Box Konami SNES set. Okay, so as you guys will know, if you've been watching the channel, I've recently completed my Konami Silver Box SNES set. I was absolutely delighted to complete that subset, and I've been wanting to do a video on those games ever since. Um, today, if you watch this on release day, Wednesday 9th of June is my birthday, so I thought what better day to get this out than today. And as a special, special treat for you all, I've got the man, the myth, the legend himself, one of the pioneers, the godfathers of the UK YouTube retro gaming scene, Champion 2D Rob himself is going to help me out. I've got 10 games here. You don't want to listen to my monotone voice droning on about all 10. So big Champion Rob himself is going to give me a hand. And uh, yeah, let's do it. Hey everyone, uh, this is Champion 2D Rob here. And uh, thank you very much, Mr. Retro Ghetto, for inviting me onto your channel. Okay, so number 10, let's get the American football-shaped elephant out of the room, shall we? Team NFL. This might be the greatest American football game ever made. It might be the worst. I don't know. I don't know anything about American football, and neither did 2D Rob. So, guys, we're blind on this one. For the benefits of this video, for you good people, I tried. I persevered. I must have spent a couple of hours trying to play this game. But I don't know the rules of American football. I don't know anything about it. I don't know how to do plays, so I'm lost. By default, this game is in at number 10. I'm pretty confident it wouldn't be too high on the list anyway, even if I was a big American football fan. A lot of these games haven't aged well for sports titles, and there's so many good games on this list. Uh, what I did establish from my couple of hours of uh, bemusement at trying to play this game was that it had very good visuals, uh, commentary, which not a lot of games had at that time, um, and I like the way that the camera shift. It did sort of go from a horizontal to a vertical plane in quite a seamless movement. Aside from that, guys, I can't really give you much more details because... Honestly, I've got no clue. Okay, so let's move on to a game that I could actually play, right? Um, next one. So in at number nine, I've decided to put in Prince of Persia. Very interesting title, this one. I hadn't played it prior to getting involved for this video for you good people. Um, and basically, I love the opening sequence. There's a Jafar, and he's got eyes on being the Sultan. And the only person that sort of stands in his way is the princess. Um, and she's falling in love with you, basically. You're the protagonist here. Um, he throws you in a dungeon and it's basically your job to escape, find the princess and stop him from becoming the evil sultan. If you watch Disney's Aladdin, it's not too far away from that, to be honest with you. Um, what it does, it does well. The video at the start is very good, as I say. Um, the big thing with this game is it's all on a time span. So you basically you've got two hours or 120 minutes as it directs you in the game. And you've got to escape and you've got to find your way back to the princess within that time. And the way it works is you try and beat your best score or best time. Um, so there's quite a bit of replayability factor with it. Um, the music's very good on this one. I really enjoyed the score. It does a lot to set the scene, um, the world setting, and also give you that sense of pressure because you are under time. And the score really adds to that as well. Um, I wouldn't say that the controls have aged particularly well. It is somewhat delayed, I think intentionally, but by today's standards, it does feel a little bit slow and it can be quite frustrating. So if you press the jump button, It'll take a little while, then it'll do the jump. Um, and you do have to be quite accurate with your movements in this one to get through the game. Not a bad game by any means, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of good games in the Konami set. And, uh, yeah, I think Prince of Persia, being where it is on this list, is about right. And, uh, yeah, worth checking out. But for me, just not age as well as some of the others. Here comes a new challenger! The very first game I'm going to talk about is Axley. Now, this game here, I will admit, I have not put a lot of time into this game. It's not one that I grew up with. Um, but I'd always heard it was a good game, so I thought I would pick it up. I bought this years ago. But yes, it's basically a shooter. It's, it's a, it's a um, horizontal shooter for the most part, but there are... Um, sort of uh, uh, vertical uh, action stages themselves that actually use a lot of uh, mode 7 and um, it's a cool game it definitely has a lot of interesting visuals 
Um, but I've got to be honest with you, I have struggled with this game. I mean, the shooting genre is not my favourite, to be honest. I mean, it, I, I like them a lot, but um, it's not my strong suit, should I say. But uh, I definitely wanted to get this because it is definitely a, um, an interesting uh, title, especially from a, a technical aspect. But uh, it is a very good shooter, but it's probably not one for a, a, a casual luck like myself, definitely for more uh, hardcore fans. Um, but it's visually very interesting. And uh, when I say it's worth having, I mean, that really depends on what your stance is on shooters. But uh, yeah, I do think it's a great game. It's definitely uh, visually a, a very, very impressive title. And uh, I, I do recommend it. It's definitely worth checking out at the very least. Uh, next a game I have here now. This is a game. I actually did play as a kid and uh, I loved it So when I actually started picking up for the Super Nintendo I definitely had to get this one in the collection and that is a uh, uh, Tiny Toons uh, Busters Buster Busts Loose now I was a fan of the cartoon back in the early 90s and uh, this was a game I did get to play as a kid. Now, I, I grew up with a Mega Drive, but weirdly enough, I never played the Mega Drive version of the game up until recent years, which I absolutely love. I think it's a great game as well. But this was the one that I played as a kid. And um, I've got to say, this, is, this game, while I personally really enjoy it, I think it's a really great action platformer title. There are a few things that you need to know about this game going in, and that is uh, some of the control mechanics. Now, Buster himself has a dash move, which is well, which is quite a key um, uh, gameplay component, and it's something that you need to master in order to progress through the game. And essentially, what happens is, the moment you dash, it's sort of automated, so you don't control the speed, but you can control how you jump. So it really is just about timing when to start and when to stop so that you're able to time it right so you can jump and you don't accidentally fall to your death um, because you are required to do the dash moves to either jump over ledges or to run up walls. And I think that's where a lot of people struggle with this game is really just mastering the, the dash mechanic because it's not really like a, a standard platformer in that sense. Um, but I do very much enjoy uh, this game and in fact all the Tiny Toons games on the 8-bit and 16-bit platforms are all very good and uh, I definitely think this is worth adding to the collection especially if you were a fan of Tiny Toons growing up but uh, uh, that aside it's definitely a really fun uh, 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 2D platformer brilliant game Okay, so number six, we have got Parodius. Uh, the best thing I can do to give this game justice is read directly from the box. The great octopus has threatened Earth to help Parodius save the planet. You and his friends must begin your search for the truth as you search the whole world over. You must find the enemy and you must destroy him. This is a side-scrolling shooter. And let me tell you, the only best thing to describe it is, is batshit crazy, but in the best possible way. It's really good fun, this game. Um, the colour palette is fantastic, the music is amazing, it really does set the tone for the whole game. But you are going to be battling octopuses, burlesque dancers, flying cat pirate ships, right? Anything that you can think of that is, well, you wouldn't think of it, that's the point. I don't know if these producers were on drugs or what, but it's a crazy game. This really defies the term um, cute em up, right? Because that's basically what it is. It's sort of a cutesy shooter, but it's really, really good fun. It's very well made and there's a lot to it here. You can select from four different ships and all of which have their own unique um, styles of playing, which again, I like that for the replayability value. The reason I put this ahead of the other shooter in this list, Axelay, is because like uh, Big Rob said, that one is more of a purist game. It's very difficult for your casual shooter fan to pick that up and play. Whereas Parodius can be enjoyed by anyone. You can pick this up and you can have a fun time with it. Um, it's very easy to get a grip of what it is that you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to do it. It's not as difficult as a lot of shooting games out there. And uh, yeah, definitely a good time this one. Really enjoyed it. If you haven't played Parodius, get involved. Next game I have here is 
Cybernator. Now, this is an interesting game I want to talk about very quickly because this, unlike some of the others here, this one doesn't actually say Konami on the box. It says Palcom. And uh, in case you don't know, the reason why it's, it's listed as Palcom and not Konami was because this was Konami's way of getting around uh, the limitations in terms of how many releases they could put out on the Super Nintendo. For, for whatever reason, Nintendo had a bunch of really weird rules some unfair rules for a lot of these uh, third party developers so basically what they did is they just basically came up with a another company name and just put out a few titles through that name and cybernator was one of them but um this is a um very very good game i must say uh, it's a it's a 2d action platformer uh run and gunner kind of game where you're like in a in a, in a mech suit it plays really well you do get to use a lot of the buttons on the Super Nintendo pad, including the shoulder buttons. And I think it works really well. And I personally feel that this is a bit of a hidden gem. Um, I really do. It's, it's, it's a really, really good um, action platformer. And um, uh, this was called, I believe this was called um, Assault Suits Vulcan. And um, it was actually re-released on the PlayStation 2 as well. Although I actually prefer this version to it, just because the, the PS2 version uses sort of polygonal graphics, whereas this uses sprites. And uh, this is a far better title in my opinion. And it's actually one of the games I go back to uh, quite a bit. So don't sleep on Cybernator, guys. If, you, if, you, if you're not sure, check out some gameplay. It really is uh, a really fun game, and it's definitely worth checking out. Okay, so this is a game that I spoke about on my last video. I've played through this, and that is TMNT Tournament Fighters. I said before, I was blown away by how good this game was. It really su uh, surprised me, sorry. Um, by all accounts, the Mega Drive version isn't as good, but I can't really speak on that because I haven't delved into the uh, Mega Drive version. But this game was amazing. Let me tell you, the visuals, I said before, I think arguably better than Street Fighter, which is saying something. Uh, the colour palette is fantastic. There's two game modes on here. Um, you can play through the actual tournament or you can play through story mode. They're very similar, but both worth playing through. Um, I put this on to play this for the purposes of this video, just so I could give you guys some understanding of what the game's about. And I played through both modes there and then. I enjoyed it so much. There's a lot taken from Street Fighter here, which again, is no bad thing. Um, a lot of the movesets you'll recognize from some of your favorite Street Fighter characters. But uh, whether you're a Turtles fan or not, this game is a must play in my opinion. Great fun. There's nothing um, I can say negatively about this game. Um, wide selection of character choice, all very diverse, all with great movesets. And yeah, really was a surprise for me. A bit of a sleeper hit on this list. So yeah, make sure you guys go out and check out Tournament Fighters. Castlevania 4. Absolutely love this game. I'm a huge Castlevania fan and uh, I absolutely adore this game. It's, it's the only one in the series with its own unique gameplay style. Now, some people prefer this style of gameplay. Others prefer the more rigid style from the 8-bit and also uh, the Castlevania, some of the later Castlevania games, because they never return to this style of gameplay for some reason. I, I, I'm, I suspect, it's just speculation on my part, but I suspect that it, it, I think the developers might have felt it made the game too easy, because essentially in this game... Uh, Simon Belmont, Belmont can whip in all directions and he can actually use the whip to also block as well and uh, in, in previous Castlevania games you can't actually do that at least not not with uh, not all the time unless it's a side character or whatever but uh, I personally find this game to be just a, a very very fun game to play um, uh, if I if I had to gripe, and this is just a, a, a small nerdy gripe, uh, I, I wish it wasn't a remake of the first game from the NES. I wish it was its own game, but it's, it, it, that's just a nitpick on my part. But aside from that, it's a brilliant game, and if you have a Super Nintendo, it is a must own. It is a must own. Like, it's, it's a staple game. You need it in your collection. No debate about it. Okay, so what's number two? Sure, a lot of people would have this at number one, but Turtles in Time. What a fantastic game. A lot of people would have grown up playing the uh, arcade game for the Turtles. 
And now this was the best thing that you could get at home. At the time, this was basically like getting an arcade game in your living room. Sat there, legs crossed in front of you. Little telly with a huge back on it. Um, a lot of good memories playing this game. And it really is um, one of the greatest. This is a traditional left to right scrolling um, beat em up. Set in the Turtles universe. And yeah, the playability on this, it's just never died. Um, obviously you go for an array of enemies as you can imagine various different foot soldiers there are also parts of uh, vertical scrolling on this there are slight differences between this and the Mega Drive version which is Hyperstone Heist uh, which, which I love to see you don't get that in modern gaming you don't really get a PlayStation and Xbox games being much different they don't have different levels throughout they're pretty much the same thing um, so yeah it's really nice to have the diversity between the two Personally, I just prefer Turtles in Time. I just think the colour palette's a little bit sharper with the Super Nintendo. Um, and yeah, I'm sure most of you guys have played this. It's never a good, bad time. It's one of them games, no matter what you're going through in life, no matter what the situation is, if you pop this in your cart, in your SNES, sorry, put it on, you hear that music, cowabunga, you're having a good time. And finally, the last game here, and this is game... This is game is not only uh, a, a, next, a great game to have in, in the collection, but it's actually my favourite game on the Super Nintendo. This was the game I played a lot as a kid. I didn't own a Super Nintendo as a kid, but when I got to swap systems with my mates, uh, most of them had this game, so I would always play it, and I loved it to death. And when, and when the Mega Drive got their own version, I was extremely happy, and I bought that day one. But anyway, this game here... You will know it, and that is uh, Super Probotector Alien Rebels, also known as Contra 3 The Alien Wars. And I absolutely love this game. If you don't know, it's a 2D side scrolling running gunner, and it's fantastic. Great use of Mode 7, uh, the sprites, the, it's just amazing. It's a fantastic game. You can have two player co op on it. It's so much fun, both in two-player and solo. Um, it, it is uh, uh, essentially a 2D running gunner, but there are some top-down uh, uh, running gunner levels as well. Uh, just a, my, one of my all-time favourites. I mean, I'm, again, like Castlevania, I'm a big fan of the Contra series as well. But this was really uh, my introduction to Contra when I played it as a kid. Like, this was the game that I envied uh, all the Super Nintendo owners. It's the one I wanted to have the most. And uh, when Probotector um, or Contra Hardcore was released for the Mega Drive, I bought it that same week. I was so excited and, and I wasn't let down with that game. That game was amazing as well. But this is what really kicked it off for me. And um, it's definitely the game I think of the most fondly when I, I think of the Super Nintendo. So, yeah, absolutely adore it. Um, yeah, fantastic game. And there we go. That's all 10. Um, as I say, guys, we've gone through these very quickly. I didn't want to keep you on this video for sort of, you know, an hour long. So all that remains for me to do is give a massive thank you, a big shout out to Champion 2D Rob himself. He really is one of the pioneers of the UK retro video, uh, video game scene on YouTube. So make sure you get in the description below, get on his channel if you haven't already and subscribe because he has a wealth of knowledge, as I'm sure you've ga gathered from watching this video. So thanks again, Rob. Really appreciate you, sir. And uh, thank you very much, Callum, for inviting me onto your channel. And uh, yeah, until next time. Bye-bye. I uh, hope you guys, uh, you know, took something from this. If there's any of these games that you played or you haven't played or you completely disagree with my ranking, let me know in the comments below as always. Guys, I've got a special, special video next week. It's going to be my one year anniversary on the tubes. Uh, and I'm doing a special uh, birthday, if you like, celebration. Uh, it's guaranteed to feature your favourite YouTuber. So make sure you get involved and don't miss out on that. Uh, I'll be seeing you good people next week for that. Take care, play your games, keep it retro. All the best. Okay, so those of you that have been watching the channel will know that my light has just fallen over and it happens regularly. Started well. I was delighted to have completed that subset and I've been wanting to put a video on the video together on those games ever since. Let's do that again. Retro ghetto. <laughs>